we are back with one of my favorite series man car talks it's been a minute since the last one i'm not gonna lie but hey you know we always have to trust god's timing guys like if it didn't happen back then and it's resurfacing now it's for a reason man but today i have a very special guest with me uh let's clap it up for yeti man <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Let's go! What's Yeti, up, my boy? Welcome to the Car Talks, bro. Let's go. I'm excited to be I don't here. Know, I don't know how familiar you are with Car Talks, but basically, bro, it's just a podcast in the car. Okay. Fire. Yeah, with fire, like, fire. The thing is, though, bro, that there's no cuts, bro. Oh. So, you know how, like... So, everything I say is going in here. Everything, bro. So, I gotta watch what I say. <laughs> You That's gotta crazy. be real, real careful what you say, bro. Back. If you make a joke and it misses, it's staying in type of thing. You get me? <laughs> There's like no no editing on this one, bro. So right, be right. careful, bro. Let's run it up then. Nah, but like, if you like, for real, for real, don't want like, or like, cause I don't want, I don't want that to like hold you back from like you saying know, stuff. Yeah, saying yeah. stuff. So like, later on, if you like think about it and you're like nah maybe i shouldn't have said that or something mm-hmm. just let me i can know. take it off yeah, yeah i'll make an exception for yeti like you feel me? thank you bro thank for you yeti. Bro. but yeti yeah this is basically car talks bro it's just a place where i take a moment and just like talk to the person sitting on the other side this is fire yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know if you saw but i think i've only had two guests on here which has been valentina and then lucas wait didn't you do one with kevin did i oh i, I think i thought so, you huh? did I think I did do one with Kevin. Wait, who's That's Lucas? Right. Lucas was this guy. So, the came that the way that one came about was crazy, bro. Cause um, he died. Oh, was, I remember. He was like yeah. a fan, right? Or he was like a supporter. He was a supporter, yeah. yeah but yeah. now he's like a, or he was kind of like an influencer too. But mm-hmm. now he's like big, big, big now. Oh, he really? Like hangs out with like Wilito and like Shadi Bay and them. Yeah, my boy I don't know if he's dang. Li- yeah, I don't know if he's living with them, but like he's like with them pretty often. That's hard. My boy's yeah. doing his thing. That's fire. Yeah, but bro, his story was crazy, and uh, yeah, I've been I've been itching to bring back this thing, and I'm happy to bring it back with you, my. Let's boy. go, let's go. Yeah, I'm excited bro. to be on here. Let's just get it started, bro. You know, like for those of, for those of the people that are watching over there, like just yeah, say like. Uh, Say your name, bro. Basically, introduce yourself. Okay. Who is Yero Hani Diaz, bro? Fire, fire. Um, well, for those that don't know me, my name is Yero Han. Yero Han Fernando Irias Espinal. What? Yeah, my middle name's Fernando. Bro, this is why I love these car talks, bro. <laughs> I did not know you, you had a middle that? name. Yeah. My Fernando? Middle, Fernando. That's oh, why every time, calling you Fernando, Every time bro. I go to, like, Chick-fil-A or, like, to, like, a place that needs my name, mm-hmm. I just say Fernando. Yeah. Cause, why? Like, Cause Yero Han's too difficult, bro. Oh yeah. yeah Half yeah, of the people true. that that pronounce it don't know how to, and, and then Arias is Arias difficult is too. like yeah, it's kind of difficult. Fernando. So I go with Fernando a lot. That's crazy. Hey, yeah. you learn something new every day, bro. Well, I mean, I didn't know your name was Jose. Yeah. Wait. To when, bro? Um. What's bro's name? Uh, Kevin, the barber. Oh yeah. He started calling Jose, and I was like, "Who's Jose?" He's like, "Oh, Jacob, bro." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> oh no, that's how you found out. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I was like, that's wild. Nah, that's insane though. I didn't know your middle name was Fernando. Yeah, bro. Fernando, Fernando. Uh, I'm I'm 24. Damn, I was about to say 25. Damn! Yeah, 24. Why, why was I going to say 24? You know what it is? I got yeah. so used to y'all being like 24, by the way. <laughs> that I, like my birthday just passed. I was like, oh, I'm 25. Nah, I'm 24. Uh, Damn. Single, you know, for anybody who's interested. Mm. DMs mm. are open. They know, bro. They know, bro. <laughs> Every video you win, you mention it, bro. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just wondering. I'm, I'm like starting to look for like my wife and shit. You know. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's, it's about time. How long has it been since you started looking for a wife? Like last week. Oh, yeah. so you serious about it now? Yeah. No, no, hundred percent. Full week looking for a wife. Yeah. Serious. How's it been so far? It's difficult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard out here. Huh? It's hard. It's hard. Of you or because of them? <laughs> both both <laughs> sides both sides play a major role you know that's funny bro nah, nah but yeah. yeah okay tell us a little bit about your childhood bro like how did you come about oh like, this uh, is sick i didn't yeah, know you were gonna yeah. ask me about my childhood that's crazy yeah we're starting from from the beginning you feel me fire fire um uh my childhood basically this is kind of weird to say but like i really didn't meet my mom till i was like seven 
Wait, what? Yeah. So I'm, see, bro, this is why I like explain, this, bro. Let me explain. I feel like I'm going to learn so much about you, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I hunt it. I hunt it. So basically, I was born in Honduras. Uh, my mom raised me till I was three. And then she came to the United States. Mm. And then I came when I was seven, you know? Oh, so I was like, okay. So I had, like, no memory or, like, no knowing of her. Like, no memories, no, like, nothing like that. I only knew her through, like, a phone. And back then, there wasn't, like... Oh, let me send her a selfie or like let me yeah. let me face on her, you know? You only knew her voice. Though. Her voice, yeah. Oh, and like man. pictures of her. Like like pictures that she had taken in Honduras. So I always say that I I didn't really meet my mom till I was seven. Right. Because yeah, I, I, I really mean, didn't meet her till I was seven. Yeah, bro. I mean I don't remember ages like one to three either, bro. Like I don't yeah. think anybody Bro, did. you know what's wild? My mom would like since she like missed out on like years with me, yeah. she would like shower me. Like like literally shower me till I was like nine. Or like ten, no way. yeah. Oh, man. She's kind of wild, huh? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure she like. I don't know, bro. Imagine that from her point of view too, bro. Because it's like she didn't have an. She wanted a better future for you. You get yeah, me? Yeah, exactly. So like, uh, like missing out on like your child's like, all of that yeah, childhood like and little everything moments, must have like been so like painful for her. Nah, yeah, but uh, I came to the United States when I was seven. I learned English, kinda, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh Inglés sin barrera type of thing. Huh? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and then uh, you know, uh yeah, basically it. I didn't really have nothing to it. Grew up as a normal kid after that. Mm. Honduras was tough though. We was gang banging out there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with y'all. <laughs> nah, okay, so you come to the US at the age of seven, here mm-hmm. you meet up with your mom again. Where is your dad in the whole picture? Oh, I have a stepdad. And mm-hmm. I met my biological dad in twenty nineteen. Oh, so you met your biological dad recently then? Yeah, like, like what, four years ago? Oh, Basically, okay. four yeah, years so ago, yeah, really four years recent, ago. Really recent. Yeah, I met my biological dad four years ago, and then I I only hung out with him for like 10 minutes, because like he had to sign some passport thing mm-hmm. for like immigration, since I was like working on my papers. Oh. I put this out before, because I recently just got like citizenship. We're not, I'm not a citizen, I'm a resident. But I recently got it like a year ago. Let's go. You know? Yeah. Congrats, Bottles up, bro. baby. Let's go party. <laughs> nah. But yeah, I saw him for like 10 minutes. And then, well, there's stuff that happened between him and my mom. So I felt like a bit of anger right. towards him. And then, I, bro, he gave me like 200 bucks. And like, he, he'd he never paid for shit in my life. Mm. So I was just like, oh, and my stepdad was there with me too. So it was like yeah. vibes, you know? Mm-hmm. Shout out my stepdad. And then, yeah, I got pissed off at my mom. Well, not, I didn't get pissed off at my mom. I just got pissed off at the situation. So I was like, oh, this did. Right. Yeah. No, yeah, because there's a bit of, like, resentment in you still for, yeah. like, him being absent. Yeah. In those years. And then, so, okay, so just to, like, get a little more context, your stepdad, you met him here in the U.S. or did you already know him in Honduras? No, I met him here in the United States. Okay, yeah. so your mom comes here. And then this is he over here is where she meets. Your she stepdad? meets my stepdad. Yeah, mm. she met my stepdad, and then some other stuff happened. And then I met my stepdad here whenever I got here. And what was it like being seven years old and like, bro, like oh, basically bro, it was so meeting your mom, meeting this. New it was so guy. crazy because look, my parents lied to me for like a while about like my stepdad being my actual dad. Oh, so I would call my dad like papa. I'd be like uh-huh. papa or papi, you know, things like that. And then like a couple months later, after I got to the United States, they ended up telling me that he wasn't my biological dad. And I like started crying and shit because like I thought he was my dad. Yeah. And then yeah, but then I was like cool with it. I was like, ah. At first I was like, I mean I was young. I don't know what what I was feeling really. You feel mm-hmm. me? But yeah, because I was little. I was like seven, eight. Yeah, but that's why I was curious, cause bro, at the age, of, like, yeah, you're young at the age of seven, but you're already like kind of self-aware, like you already know kind of what's going yeah, on, yeah. type of thing. And you, yeah. I feel like the memories that you have when you're like seven and eight are like more vivid than they would be when you're like younger than that. Yeah, for sure. So damn, bro, that's tough. That's yeah, it's crazy, but yeah, I love my stepdad. He kind of like I I always tell everybody that he's my dad because he like raised my raised mm-hmm. me my whole life you know yeah, yeah I always hear you he like took care of me Talk later, put food on the table paid the bills took care of my mom so I'm always like oh yeah that's my pops yeah damn guys camera overheated 
This Texas heat, man. Yeah. But all right, we got it all covered now. All right, Eddie. So we were at the part where you're, you know, you you come to the U.S. You're seven years old. You meet your mom for the first time after not seeing her for a long time. For a you minute. Meet your stepdad for the actual first time. Yep. Okay, and now. I'm assuming you didn't know much English. How was it like, like coming here at the age of seven and like not knowing English? Were you bullied? Like, what was the whole school experience like, not knowing English? Yeah, uh, it was cool. I uh, <clears throat> I got set back a year. I was supposed to be like in second grade, uh -huh. and then like a week later they put me back in like first grade. So I like had to experience like two classes, like hella quick, oh, you know. Yeah. But then, like, my first grade class was better because that's where I met, like, all of my homies. Mm. Yeah, and then, like, I grew up with them and stuff like that, you know, played soccer and things like that. So I still have, like, friends from, so like, was first grade. Type of thing. Yeah, yeah, I still have, like, a couple friends from first grade, things like that. But I had a pretty good experience. You know, I never got, like, bullied like that because I was always, like, pretty talkative and, like, you know, uh -huh. I was, like, the, the funny guy, I guess. So, like, the people the in your class, dude. they, like... They like didn't know that much English as well. Were you like in like I don't know what they call it, but in Houston oh, they call yeah. it like ESL. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I was in that till I was like in seventh grade, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was in that till I was in seventh. But like in in elementary, you know how they just kind of like take you out of class and you go to a different one. Yeah. To like learn English and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I did that. I took like exams. I took so many exams for like English. And things like that and like literature i still didn't even fucking learn how to spell <laughs> fuck it <laughs> fuck it bro it is hey, it some is. of it worked bro some of it some of it didn't bro. there was nah, so you much know, the teachers could do bro. you know what it is bro you know what, like it's the fact that i just didn't like reading growing up mm. you know like i never liked reading like that shit it just wasn't my thing i you think feel like you're really bad at spelling or what hell yeah like really? Yes, bro. I know I'm bad at spelling. <laughs> Cause like I, it, and I still have that like uh that like Spanish in me where I'm like, oh, it was just you just spell it how it sounds, you know? How do you spell charisma? Bro, I don't know how to spell it. Bro. Try it, try it, try it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> just try it, bro. I'm not gonna try, spell it, bro. Spell it how it sounds. I'm not gonna try, bro. I'm telling you, I'm not. <laughs> Fuck no. I don't want to embarrass myself. I would rather just not do it. <laughs> Alright, so, yeah. that's cool though. That's cool though, bro. Cause I asked, cause I personally got bullied, bro. When I was you got bullied? Yeah, well, I, I they like tried to bully me, but bro, yeah, my I, dad, the thing was that my dad had like anger issues, bro. So he would always tell us like, no, like you guys are not gonna let nobody. Your biological bully, you know? dad? Yeah. Oh, so when he, he lived here? Yeah, yeah, Fire. yeah. So he would tell me, bro, and he would tell me and my brother like, nah, like if somebody bullies y'all, y'all need to make sure y'all check them and like do something about it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so he would always continuously like tell us that so I I kind of already had an okay from my dad that it was okay to fight mm -hmm. So whenever like there was mainly like the black kids bro that would like bully, bully. me because of like I didn't Because I because of the way I dressed and because I didn't like know any English. Yeah, so they would like hella bully me bro So I would always like be getting in fights like, when I was little with like, um. the black kids and stuff but but yeah, that's why I asked because I thought maybe you had like a similar. Nah, story. the majority of like my classmates, like, especially like elementary, were all Hispanics. Like I think we had like one or two like black kids, and then like maybe like three white kids, you know. Mm -hmm. And then like those are the ones that, bro. Everybody in my elementary went to the same, to the like basically the same middle school and the same high school. Mm -hmm. Like we all kind of stuck together, so that was pretty cool. But that's crazy, huh? The butterfly effect, bro. Cause. Yeah. If you hadn't like gone down one grade, your whole friend group would have been like different. Completely different yeah, bro. yeah, that's very true. Nah, but yeah, I kind of I was low key a bully like middle school. Nah. -uh. Yeah, bro. Unfortunately, but oh, damn. it was it was crazy because like I was like, bro, I would talk shit to like football players, and bro, keep in mind <laughs> I was like I was a baby, bro. Like even when I was like a like in twelve. Or not in 12th grade. Like when I was like 12 years old, yeah. But I was like five feet, like 105 pounds. Mm -hmm. Like I was a little like, so like three inches shorter than right now. Right, right. <laughs> Come on, bro. nah. For anybody who who doesn't know, I am five eight. <laughs> Stop capping, bro. How tall are you? Five nine. 
<laughs> all right bro all right, i know look, you're bullshitting let's move on from the from the age thing all right so we're in middle school time right mm -hmm. middle school time how was your middle school experience middle school was fun i had a lot of fun i was a little pothead oh yeah yeah okay okay so okay that's important so middle school time is the time around you like got introduced to all that yeah it's because i had an older brother Oh, uh, I have an older brother who's 27. He lives here? He lives in Honduras now, oh. but he lived here, but he got deported. Oh, so, okay. So when you came to the U.S. at the age of seven, did you come with him? No, he was already here with my mom. Oh, so he's, he came here, like, with your mom then? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. Because gotcha. he was older, so, like, the reason uh -huh. why my mom didn't bring me on the first trip... You were too young. Because I was too young, yeah. And she didn't want to, like, risk anything happening to me. Gotcha. Or like her having a ticket. Did you care. have any memories of your brother when you like came, or you kind of just met him? No, too? I met. No, I have no memories with my brother. Like when we lived in Honduras, like I just have memories of him when I got here. Uh -huh. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah how, but how's how's your relationship with your brother? Not that good. No. Nah, we don't have a good relationship because he was always like, he was always into other things that I wasn't into. You know, uh -huh. like bad shit. Like I don't really talk too much about my brother because like it's like not a topic that like i like to bring up type of thing you know but he was more into like drugs and gang banging and robbing and tattoos and smoking and drugs and other shit like that and Honduras type of things type of vibe yeah and well i just wasn't really interested in that but yeah i did mm -hmm. get introduced to marijuana like very young like very young by your brother by my by my older brother yeah because mm. my older brother basically look my older my older brother was in middle school and i was in elementary and i got introduced to marijuana when i was in elementary Ooh. so by the time i went into middle school i already knew what like weed was and like what smoking crazy, was bro. yeah and like i already knew how to like you know do certain things like what grade in elementary did you like nah i'm not gonna say it bro no. nah i was too young i was right, a baby right, right. bro yeah that's crazy because yeah bro i do remember like in elementary kids like sneaking in weed when i was in fifth grade mm -hmm. and bro that to me was like bro like crazy bro, like, these kids are playing with fire bro like yeah these kids are gonna go to jail type of thing i was yeah. like in shock bro because i was raised to be such a good kid to the point where like i didn't even want to be like 20 feet near that yeah yeah surrounded by it nah yeah so i also like, grew up in like apartments bro and uh -huh. like we where i grew up it was like a complex of like seven different buildings uh -huh. and there would be like little circles like this and around the circles it would just be apartments like complex yeah. so that's where i would like learn a lot of bad shit because yeah. like all my other friends were like kind of hood or like uh -huh. yeah i basically grew up in the hood like not ghetto as fuck, but like yeah. it was hood mm -hmm. overall. Yeah, like my my older brother was really bad. He got his first tattoo when he was like twelve, bro. Like his whole arm right here. Oh well, y'all can't mm -hmm. see it, but like his whole arm right here. He was like a twelve year old like this, full of tats. Bro, and then by like thirteen, insane. he had his other arm like filled up with tats. Yeah, he was getting all the shorties in school, huh? Shit, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even. Know. I was too young. That's but crazy, yeah, he bro. was he was bad. So I was, it, there was like a time in my life too where I was like, oh, I want to be like my brother, you know. And mm -hmm. my brother would get like these bald fades, like at oh, the yeah. time, and I would get bald fades too just because mm -hmm. of him. And there were certain things that that's he would crazy. do that would be like, oh, I want to be like him. Yeah, I mean that's your yeah. older brother. Bro. Yeah, like, kind of like had a lot like, of influence. Yeah, older brothers definitely have like a influence over like the younger ones, even if yeah. they don't realize it, bro. Like yeah. He probably didn't realize it at the time, but they have an influence. Yeah, I, I do have, I know I have a lot of influence on my younger brother because, like, he sees, like, all oh, that I make YouTube videos and things mm -hmm. like that. And, like, he wants to be, like, a YouTuber. And, oh, like, really? Yeah, like, whenever I was, whenever I lived with my parents, he would see that I would play video games all the time. And, like, he loves playing video games now, you know? So you have three siblings total? I have two. Oh, yeah. But so it's three it's of us in total. Gotcha. Yeah. And your younger sibling, how old is he? He just turned 13. On Saturday. 13. Okay, now. Yeah. Was he born here? Yeah, he was born here was in 2011. So you got to experience, like, all of that of him, like, being born and, like, being around when he was a baby and yeah, everything? Yeah, yeah. 
But I have a good relationship with my younger brother. It's just the thing is that like we're so so far apart so in far age, away, yeah. where it's like, oh, he's not gonna be interested, or I mean, oh, he might yeah. be interested, but like, I'm doing so many other different things, like adult things that right. he can't do. You know. That's true, bro. You yeah. know what? I never thought about about it like that, but that's yeah. That's probably like a struggle that siblings that are really far apart in age have. Yeah. Where it's like you don't really have much to like talk about really, or like yeah. things like that. Yeah, because he talks to me about like. Like, bro, I just called him yesterday, and he was like, oh, yeah, like, we went to main event, and, like, I spun that big wheel, and I got, like, a thousand bonus extra tickets. Like, he mm-hmm. hit, like, the jackpot yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I laugh, but it's just, like, wow, well, I'm, like, 24, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, like, what? Like, that's crazy, you know? But like, Hey, I st- bro, but you gotta be like that, bro. No, 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 I show the excitement towards him, you know, yeah, so he yeah. feels good about it, you know? But, like, <laughs> you know, it's, like, there's, like, a lot, there's a big age gap yeah, so yeah, there's there's a big difference on like where we're at in life yeah yeah i get what you're trying to say and he's barely about to go into like eighth grade or like i think he's in eighth grade right now or seventh all right grade. so middle school or vibe vibe yeah. i had i had a fun time in middle school i got in i almost got in a couple fights but it was mostly because like i would talk a lot of shit uh, <laughs> i had a big mouth bro like middle yeah. school bro i had a big mouth and then when I stopped having a big mouth was when I went into my freshman year. Because then I'd see seniors. And seniors are basically adults, you know? They're like 18 yeah. or whatever. So them boys were big. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I need, to, I need to learn how to shut the fuck up. <laughs> basically, yeah. Before you get whooped, yeah. Yeah, but I had a good friend. I had a good friend group in middle school. Honestly, all of my friends that I have now are like my middle school friends. Really? Like from Austin. Y'all all like went to the same high school? Mm-hmm. We all went to the same high school, and then we kind of like fell apart, but then we always like come back, you know. Right. And like now we're just like a little click, like it's just us every time. Now, any girlfriends in middle school? Nah, no girlfriends. Not one. Nah. Damn, okay. I, I had know. a crush on a girl, bro. Oh, yeah. I've said this before on videos. I had a crush on this girl, who was like, in my opinion, was like the prettiest fucking girl in like, uh, like middle school and high school too. Uh-huh. But uh. Bro, she rejected me, bro. Oh, so she was accessible at least, so like you could talk to her? Nah, yeah, we were friends, but that's what uh, fucked us over, that we were friends, you know? Yeah. So like, it was like, uh, you know, type of vibe. I didn't have no game either. <laughs> yeah. Little game and you had a buzz cut too. And I had a buzz cut, yeah. yeah the, the hair wasn't there yet. It wasn't, it wasn't popping, mm-hmm. you know? All right, so middle school. No girls, but it was a vibe. A vibe. Okay, high school. Is this where, like, the Yeti that we know now comes about? The This is where, like, the, the Yeti. player Yeti? Nah, 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 nah. Heck nah. nah, nah this nah, is nah, where, yet. like, the the good Yeti started coming through. Because, like, mm. middle school, I tried being too much like my brother. And okay. I was mean. And I thought that bullying was, like, funny. Or I, I wasn't, like... It wasn't like I would go up to somebody and talk shit about them or like, you know. It, it was, was more like a verbal I would like p- pick on people like here and there. Right. But like, I thought it was like, I don't know. I was a bully though. I'm not even going to lie. I was. Uh, so I'm assuming but it like, was more like verbal bullying. Kind yeah, of like, type of thing. Like joking, but kind of putting somebody down with a yeah, joke. Exactly, like exactly yeah, you like know what, that. Bro, I, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I guess I'm a, I was a bully too. Yeah, like, it's <laughs> kind of like when whenever like our group jokes around, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like that, but like in middle school mm. type of thing. Nah, yeah, 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 bro. I didn't get out of that till like recently, if I'm being honest. Nah, like, that ass. Yeah, bro. <laughs> it's just, bro. I've always just thought it was like. But it's cause I would do it to like, like random kids. Oh, bro, I have uh, a, I have a crazy story, bro. Uh, okay, bro. In sixth grade, I was bad. Like I was a bad kid, right? Uh, and the new iPhone had just dropped, like the iPhone four. Okay. You know, like the first one that had like this design. You know, like the first one that had like no button. Oh, oh no, it had yeah, like yeah. a little button right here in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. One on the bottom, yeah. But it was like a square. Uh-huh. Bro, okay, so I'm in like uh I'm in computer class with, with this other white girl, you know? Mm-hmm. Or whatever. And she sat next to me and I sat next to my homie. Basically like this, and then the white girl's right here. Okay, okay. And she she put her phone in her backpack, bro. And bro, being the fucking kid I was, like just being a I was so dumb. But I grabbed her phone and I I stole it, bro. <gasps> Literally stole it, but look then this is where everything comes about right i stole her phone i took out her sim card and i broke that shit so they wouldn't track it bro how is that even a joke bro that's not even a prank or nothing that's, just... that's not no it's not a prank like i was a thief <laughs> like i was literally a thief bro 
But uh, I wanted a phone really bad, and I knew my parents were gonna give me a fucking iPhone. Bro, you know, that's they, at that time they were like mad expensive. Nah, yeah, you, you know? were bad bad then, bro. Cause man, yeah, you were bad bad, bro. Stealing a phone is like another level. Nah, yeah. So I stole this this girl's phone, and but I remember like I would see her in class like the next day. And she would be so sad, bro. Like, she would cry. Oh, and, like, I had her bro. fucking phone in my pocket, bro. No. Yeah, bro. And, and uh, anyways, when, I think it was, like, three months after I took her phone, bro. She started, like, being suspicious about mm. the phone that I had. Because it was the <laughs> same fucking phone. <laughs> bro, am I stupid ass? Like, <laughs> like, I got caught up in my words. Like, I got oh. caught up in, like, my words and, like, like just being nervous that she was questioning me about it right and bro i ended up saying the dumbest shit i was like how do you know this is the phone i stole from you oh bro, <laughs> caught the fuck up. <laughs> like caught up no. bro the like my next period an officer walks in and i'm in middle school bro i'm a sixth grader mm. an officer walks in oh this was in middle school mm-hmm. in sixth grade mm-hmm. Damn. yeah a cop walks in right and then they call my name and I knew it was gonna happen. Like I was like, oh, I'm gonna get caught up. So I had given the phone to my homegirl. Uh-huh. And I was like, yo, take this shit and like whoever like hits you up about it, like don't fucking answer. Like don't uh-huh. have like a cop or something. I was like, I already had it all planned out in my head, right? Man, camera done died again on us guys, but we back on right, Yeti. Continue the story. You yeah. Didn't forget, right? Nah, I didn't. Alright. So anyways, I had given the phone to my homegirl, right? That's where we're at. Uh-huh. And um yeah, bro, the cop comes in, and it's a school cop, and it was a girl, it was a lady, like, it was a girl cop, and, I, bro, I was mad cool with her, like, I was so cool with the officer at my middle school, mm-hmm. and she called me in, and she was like, hey, we know you stole so-and-so's phone, like, um, all we ask is that you give it back, and this and that, and I was like, oh, no, I don't have it. Ooh, your heart must have sank. Bro, I was so nervous, like, my heart was, Ooh. like, as soon as they called me from the school, and, like, they were like, oh like get out of the class and bring your backpack because they told me to like bring your backpack with you i was like damn i'm about to get suspended oh I also first time i got suspended was in fourth grade no way i got suspended what? for three days for cussing at my teacher <laughs> bro you yeah. were bad for real i got bro. suspended for three days and i was supposed to be sent to like uh the you know how they send like students to like another part but like the oh, bad school uh, iss but it was or, like yeah, but that's of, like in school suspension no, yeah, yeah, it's the not other that, one's it's like not. Ah, I forgot what it was called. Bro. I don't know what I it was called. What you mean, though. Yeah, but it's a school for like the bad kids. Yeah, in elementary. In elementary, uh-huh. I was supposed to be sent. And no. my mom was like, nah, you're not going to that shit. Like, she was all pissed. She was mad. And then I just ended up not going to school for three days. And then I came back and then I had a whole conversation with the teacher. Shout out Ms. Moore, though. She pissed me off that you day. Pissed off? Yeah. What you tell her? I forgot. But I was like <laughs> yelling and like screaming and cussing at her. I don't know what I told her. She was pissed though. She, like she grabbed me by the hand. She was like, "Oh, you're gonna talk to me like that." And I was crying. <laughs> I was so mad. Anyways, back to the, the phone, phone the story. Phone, the phone. Um, yeah, I, I walk in. I sit down. They're like, "Oh, we know you stole so and so's phone. All we all we ask is that you return it back." And I was like, "I don't have it." This and that. And then and then I folded, bro. I ended up folding. I was so scared because mm-hmm. like the officer was talking about like like um, we're gonna expel you and this and that from school so I was like oh I have to like now I have to you know say that it was me and I was like yeah I stole it and then and they're like so who has the phone and it was my homegirl Andrea she had the phone so then they called Andrea up and yeah like she made me delete the whole thing like everything on the phone it wasn't my my phone you know (laughs) but I had like pictures like I had everything on it. A couple selfies, a couple yeah, thirst traps yeah, in there. Yeah, literally huh? everything. And <laughs> she was like, I'm going to need you to delete everything. So I deleted everything off the phone, and then I returned it back to the girl. Nah, well, hey, yeah, I'm happy I'm happy for the girl, bro. She got her justice. Yeah, right? she did. She really did. Imagine, bro, like you get an iPhone. Yeah. You're happy about it. And then, I would I would be flexing that hard. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> that's mine. That's mine. <laughs> and then the little Honduran boy just steals it. Yeah. That's wild. Little vibe, All bro. All right, yeah, so Yeti. Middle school, bad. Yeti in elementary, bad. Yeti in high school, what happened? Yeti in high school was better. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of my eighth grade year in middle school, I spent it in ISS. Mm -hmm. Like, I was in an ISS, and my mom would have to be signing these little cards telling her that I was in ISS. Sometimes I wouldn't even bring it to her, though. Like, I would just throw them away. 
Yeah, bro, you were bad, bad. Yeah, so all of all of my all of my eighth grade year, I spent it in I well, not all of it, but a lot of it. I would be in ISS for like three days or like two days. Do you think like you like being like rebellious like that came from like you just being angry at like at what? Like or why did you just like want attention from your parents or what do you nah. think? You don't think there's like a? I think it was just like the influence like of the people I was hanging around with and like like your homies. Well, yeah, I had my I had my school homies, but a lot of them didn't live in the same apartment, so I had a different friend group at my apartment mm. complex, you know. So you think it was your apartment homies then? Yeah, cause those were the ones that we would like smoke and we would like, Damn. and we would like, bro. I remember in middle school, bro, we would. We wouldn't even ding dong ditch, bro. We would go to like this neighborhood and we would throw rocks at fucking windows. Like for what? But I remember this one time we dead ass like, we went to the neighborhood and we just started chunking rocks at this fucking house and like broke their windows and we ran, bro. And then there was like a cop who came by Ooh. and we were like, oh, we gotta act cool. And like, as soon as the cops started like, like separo, we all just started chopping and I just uh -huh. went home. Yeah, I went home. <laughs> yeah, bro. It was you crazy. Gotta, nothing happened. Nothing happened. I don't think anybody got caught, but yeah, we would like throw rocks at windows. That shit was so stupid. Like I think about it now, and I'm like, what, what the fuck were we doing that for? But no. yeah, uh, high school is when I started changing though. Like my freshman years, when I was like, oh damn, I really need to get serious about things, cause then people started pressuring like college, you know, mm -hmm. you know, like freshman year, everybody's like, oh, you need to do good so you can get into a good college and things like that. What what uh, high school did you go to? Was it like uh, like a big high school? It was, oh, hold on, put another place better. Oh, yeah. uh, the high school I went to, it wasn't big, but there was a good amount of students. I think it was like 2,500 students. But Santi told me that Dovey is like 4,000 4, students. Jeez, bro, mine was like oh. 300, 400 the whole school. Nah, what? <laughs> I went to like a really smart school, bro. Oh, that's crazy, did you really? Yeah. Smart ass. It was, but I, the, the reason why I asked you is because, bro, I like missed out on like the high school experience. So that's why I was asking if like yours was like big. Uh, my like, school was like. you a, got your a, high school experience? There was like a 5A school and a 6A school, you know, like 6A was bigger. Mm -hmm. Mine was a 5A. So it wasn't like, mm, so it wasn't small, but it wasn't big. big. It was yeah. like in between. But I did go to like a pretty rich school. Oh, really? Not rich, but it was like a fine art school. Mm. Where there's like kids that play the fucking piano and band and, and fucking what did you art. Do? I was in art class, but I wasn't an artist. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, what was your talent? Nothing. <laughs> I just be in that bitch, <laughs> chilling. You just be in there, huh? Yeah, because they made you choose like a fine arts, uh, like to get a credit. Yeah. And mine was art. Like, I'd just rather take art than, like, play an instrument or, like... Yeah. Oh, because we had also... We had, um... What is it called where you can make cups? Oh, the pottery or Pottery. Something? There we go. That yeah. shit. Whatever it was called. Some shit like that. Where you play with clay and you make, like, plates and uh -huh. shit. You could go into that. Mm. So, it was, like, more like of an art type of school thing, you right. know? Right. Kind of like Victoria's. Type of vibe, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like there was, like, theater. Well, I think a lot of schools have theater, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was like theater, um, dance, and like, then there was like uh, the other little things like art and like mm -hmm. band and playing instruments and things like that. But I didn't do any of that. I was like, I was thugging it out. You feel me? <laughs> All right. So high school Yeti then was what? Yeah, I was more like? vibes. Like I started like actually like, you know, getting into my classes and being more active and, you know, doing things for the school things like that i got into soccer i wanted to get a soccer scholarship what do you think made that like switch for you from being like really rebellious into like more calm more like involved into like you're taking school serious was it just maturity or was it like did you depart from your friend group or what do you think yeah the thing was that um i didn't live in apartments no more like my parents ended up getting like a mobile home uh -huh. you know and like at first when i was like in high school i would be like embarrassed that i lived in a mobile home you know, or things like that, but... Man, so y'all that live in, like, mobile homes or, like, fucking apartments, don't ever be embarrassed of, like, where you live because, like, your parents work hard to, like, put you somewhere, Max. you know, where it's, like, nice. And at the time, I thought it was embarrassing. Like, I would never tell anybody that I lived in a mobile home because mm -hmm. I was like, bro, that's so embarrassing, you know? But it's not, like, one of those mobile homes that has, like, wheels. It's, like, the ones that are planted, yeah, like, on, like the ground, on the ground, you know, yeah. type of thing, yeah. But, yeah, I, like, moved away from the apartments and then moved to a mobile home and then... I think what really made the switch was just seeing my brother like in and out of like 
like these detention centers because he was well, spent. So he was still with you at the time. Yeah, yeah. My brother lived with lived with me and my parents till he was like eighteen, and then he ended up, you know, doing stuff, and that got him sent out of the country, uh -huh. basically. But yeah, freshman year I was like, damn, I need to like make something with myself and my life, you know. Mm -hmm. So I started like doing good in school, and like being involved in things, stuff like that. How old were you when uh, when your brother got deported? I think he was 18, so I was like 15. So you were in... I was a freshman. freshman. Mm -hmm. mm, so you think maybe... I was like a like, freshman or a sophomore. Maybe seeing what like being rebellious did to him kind of yeah. like made, made you like tone down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean at this time also my brother was already tatted, bro. Like uh -huh. his chest, his back, like all over him. And me and my brother don't look alike at all. Like he has colored eyes. He's probably like your skin tone. Really? And his hair is like, it's not curly, but it's like, it's like wavy, rough and matted like type oh. of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like we look hella different. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. All right, so high school Yeti, any shorties? Nah, you know the girl I had a crush on in middle school? She went to your high school too? Well, yeah, she went to my high school, but I stopped having a crush on her my freshman year. Cause I I was like, damn, there's so many other pretty girls. Like it's not really just her, you know. Yeah. So I like, in my head I was like, damn, there's other pretty girls, and but nah, no shorties, no freshmen, no 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 girlfriends, no nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And sophomore year, no girls either. And then my junior year, there was this really pr pretty girl that liked me, and I was like, damn, she's really pretty, and we had like the same class. Uh huh. And. Uh, Bro, she was so interested in me, but I had no game, bro. Like, I would be so nervous. <laughs> like, I would genuinely be nervous, right? Yeah. And, uh, like, we hung out one time, and then that was basically it, you know? Like, we had class and stuff like that, and, like, she... But I remember this one time, she would... We were sitting down, like, in, in this little table outside, and she had her friend, and then I was there. And, bro, she did us in front of my face, told her friend, she was like... She was like... Okay, Anna, leave so you don't can make a move on me. Like in front of her friend, oh, bro. So she was, she was like, she was with it. Yeah, you she know? was like the outgoing one. Yeah, but, but I just, I didn't have like, you know, I didn't know yeah, how to talk bro, to girls I and things like that. I feel you on that, bro. I was so like, I was. So you know what's crazy though that like she followed me on Instagram like uh -huh. maybe like two months ago, but she has a boyfriend. Oh no way. Yeah, she followed. I mean, and I had a like decent relationship with her, you know, like. Uh -huh. She knew I liked her. She just knew that I couldn't make a move on her because I didn't know anything. Yeah, you weren't. You know? Yeah. I wasn't educated on girls yet, basically. You didn't have the sauce yet, bro. Exactly. I had the juice, and the juice wasn't working. And she followed you two months ago? Yeah, she followed me, but she has a boyfriend, and well, she's just not my type no more, you know? Uh, yeah, so I just didn't follow her back. And then she unfollowed me, so I was like, eh, that's cool. <laughs> but whenever we were juniors, yeah, she was bad. I was like, damn. <laughs> But, back in the day, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, senior Yeti? Senior Yeti got a girlfriend, yeah. Hmm. That was, like, my first girlfriend, you know, my first, like, everything type of vibe. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool, it was cool. Cool, cool, cool. I had a cool experience with my first girlfriend. So I'm girlfriend. guessing senior Yeti got a little bit of sauce then. Mm, yeah, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. It's because me and my homies had, like... So as soon as senior year started... Me and my homies had this thing where, like, we would just bullshit with, like, girls and, like, tell them stupid things, you know, uh -huh. like, in the hallways. Like, just, like, like what? just, like, little, like, innocent stuff, like, oh, you look pretty or, like, this and that, you know, uh -huh. just innocent things, right? Yeah. And then there was this girl who everybody knows because she was my first girlfriend. Mm. Um, anyways, she walks past, right? And I knew that she had done, like, uh, like movies and things like that. Because she was, like, a little actress or whatever. Oh, wait, no way. I didn't know that. Yeah, Pekka. What? She was, like, she was like an actress before she actually did social media. She would, like, do, like, gigs, like, commercials and things like that. And so, like, she was known in the school for that? She was known, but I had just heard about it, like, the summer before. Gotcha. Because this other girl had told me, she was, like, oh, like, you know this girl in our school, like, does... Uh, commercials and things like that and it was her mm, that's crazy and yeah eventually us saying like stupid things to girls got me to say something stupid to her mm -hmm. so i i like went up to her and i was like oh i heard you're an actress i was like let's make a movie 
<laughs> like just straight up and she kind of just nah, bro, why, why, yeah bro like that's kind of that, crazy bro that is really crazy and actually, bro. Um, like first interaction ever first interaction ever nah, bro. That, what? that's what i told her but you know i knew i was just fucking around i never yeah. and and at the time i was like oh this girl is way too pretty like she's not gonna be interested in me like i'm i was a little ugly right so you were crazy, just kind of like yeah like i was making laugh type of it's because one of my friends had dared me i'm pretty sure mm. so i was like fuck it i'll go do it and i was like watch this watch this and i went up to her and uh yeah and then after i told her that she said that like a couple months passed and she would just like she would try to like see me in the hallways because we weren't in the same grade mm -hmm. you know so she would try to like see me in the hallways and wait, wait, but don't skip over it what was like her reaction like like oh no she just laughed she like laughed and walked past me oh she just kept walking she didn't say anything yeah and then like i remember like seeing her go inside of the door and she like turned around like she was gonna tell me something and then she just like regretted and, and kept going. Yeah. But then like once we actually started talking, then she was like, oh, like I would always try to like figure out where your classes were so like I could see you in the hallways and things like that. Yeah. But I was a senior, so I'd had like, I had like um, off periods and things like that. So I would never take the same route. So what was she? She was a sophomore. Mm. Yeah, we were like two years apart. Oh yeah. Yeah, youngins. <laughs> I was a little baby, bro. I was, what, yeah. 17, 18? I was a kid. All right, so Senior Yeti then gets a little bit of sauce. Yeah. When do you get introduced into the whole social media world that has changed your life? 2019. 2019, you were how old? I was 19. Oh, wow. I was turning 20 that year. Well, so you got introduced to the social media well, yeah, pretty, pretty kind of. Well, well, yeah, that's kind of like the age. Kind of, yeah, kind of. Most people, most. But kids. I wasn't the type to post on social media. Like yeah. I would, like, I had an Instagram, but I wouldn't post pictures. Or I would post pictures here and there, but bro, I would be so damn nervous to post a picture mm -hmm. or like post a story on Instagram. So, I would post on Instagram sometimes but then it got to a point like my senior year I just had my profile picture blacked out and like no post you know I was like mysterious yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was I was mysterious I was gatekeeping myself <laughs> yeah bro wanted to be mysterious so and basically bad. basically I had a good amount of followers I had like 500 followers oh yeah for like high school I was like oh yeah I'm popping so when so it was during high school then that you like started social media Nah, I I have I was already out of high school. I was working at H E B. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so I'm guessing for you social media started on YouTube? Yeah, YouTube. Okay. My ex was like, Yo, let's make YouTube videos just for fun. And I didn't have nothing better to do. Like our goal was never to like blow up. We just kinda wanted to make YouTube videos for like, for, like memories. For fun. Yeah, like memories and fun. So we made a YouTube video. And then it was more for like our high school, you know? Like only like high school people were seeing it and right, things right. like that. Okay. I remember our first YouTube video, we were sitting down like, it was a mukbang, basically. Uh -huh. Yeah, we sat down at a park and ate fucking, uh, we ate pollo con tajadas. Oh, no yeah. way! Oh, yeah, cause that I, sounds so good, I had to, I had, I told her, I was like, yo, there's this really good ass like Honduras, Hondureño spot, like, you know, to eat. Uh -huh. I was like, let's grab a plane, go to a park, and we'll just eat it there. And Ooh, we recorded our first so video good. on our phone. Mm. on an iphone all right okay okay now yeah. it's getting interesting because we're getting into like your whole career mm -hmm. now tell me uh yeah. where what was the f or at what point did it go from like being something fun to being something like okay wait hold on like this is something like this is this could potentially be our job yeah so it was more like it was more like we were having fun with it for a good like five months because mm -hmm. we start i started may 2019 that's when like we uploaded our first youtube video okay. and then in 2020 literally bro like five days into 2020 you know the new year had just started uh -huh. we blew up like we uh well we didn't blow up but our one of one of our tiktoks went like viral oh, okay okay bro i have a video you want to see it it's crazy i have a video of like of like the video that blew up n well basically our reaction Oh, yeah, yeah you want to see it? It's crazy. Look. Look, this was 2020, okay, January. I was playing video games and shit. And like, it's a video. Bro, I didn't even have a lot. 
but this yeah. was the first like interaction of a, us like gaining uh, social media clout, you know. Yeah, it's the first first taste of like what, yeah, of like being followers and like, like clicks and things like that. Yeah, uh, that was yeah. like the first time. I just yeah. have it saved because I'm like, bro, that's a memory to have, you know. No, yeah, it's, it's the beginning like, of like your career. Yeah, literally. Which yeah, is still on. And it was a it was a weird TikTok, bro, because she was like dancing, and I kind of just went in there and tried to like mimic her. Oh, it so was, it was both of you guys in it. Yeah, it wasn't planned. Mm -hmm. Like it, it wasn't planned at all. Like she would she would do TikToks here and there for fun, you know, kind of like. Just yeah okay so ca ca catch me up okay so you guys started on youtube mm -hmm. but your first taste of like viralness was on tiktok on tiktok okay yeah. now okay you guys are going on tiktok so uh what did you guys start prioritizing more i'm guessing since you got a taste of it on tiktok you guys started being more consistent on tiktok or nah to be honest uh we would do tiktoks here and there but she would mostly do like like her stuff you know it was like like she would show off her clothes or like her art things like that mm -hmm. and then we would do youtube videos so we like prioritize youtube still okay yeah basically got it now at what point did like did you like uh get a taste of like or at what point did it become i would say like a job or like something that you like get money out of i don't know bro because it was like I remember one time, like, we saw a check, and it was, like, $3,000. And at mm -hmm. that time, I was, like, bro. From YouTube. Yeah, from YouTube. I, it, we had, like, one month where, like... Because after our, after our TikTok blew up, then people would go to our YouTube channel. Then we started getting, like, 1,000 views on the video. Mm -hmm. And then it went to 5, and then it went to 10, you know? And then it went to, like, 15. Mm -hmm. And then we started doing, like, little fake pranks here and there. Like, just, uh -huh. you know couple shit yeah so we were like fake faking like a little prank or whatever and it, you could tell that it was fake but i'm guessing like the audience was like eh, fuck it whatever this is yeah. entertaining mm. basically and then uh and then we saw a month where it was like three thousand dollars and i was like bro three thousand dollars like i don't even make that shit in a month at fucking working you know right because during this time you were still hours. working at mm -hmm. heb you said yeah. right yeah, I was working at HEB. HEB is um, a grocery store. Grocery store, Texas, yeah. I, I was a cashier. And then I did, like, curbside. I was, like, uh, shopping for people's groceries and things like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so... So we you, seen that, and we were like, you oh, get a Yeah, you get a big paycheck crazy. from YouTube. Is mm -hmm. that, like, the time where you guys are, like, okay, you know what? Like, let's take this serious. Let's start yeah, yeah. Or, we started, like, you know, trying to go crazy with it. We were focusing on TikTok and YouTube at this time. Uh -huh. So we make like TikToks here and there, like couple TikToks, you know, and then we make like YouTube videos, things like that. We were uploading like, we would have weeks where we would upload twice, once, but every month there was like at least five, six, seven videos. Okay. Now, did there ever come a point where you were like, now we need to go full time into this, and you decided to quit? Or yeah, yeah, there was a point, which was right before we met y'all. Uh huh. Uh, so. We what we our first like taste of it of like social media, like a lot of views, was January, like fifth, sixth, and then by like August, yeah, I'm pretty sure by like August and stuff like that, we were already like pretty known, not known like that, but we were like we had like our little clout or you whatever, had already mm -hmm. a big following. Yeah, I think I already had maybe like 30k on Instagram or like 40k yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. And she had like a hundred or like a hundred fifty k. Okay, yeah. So at this point, you guys are already like considered influencers. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like small influencers, not like nothing big, you know. Yeah. And then we met y'all, and when when I went to meet y'all, I quit my job. Oh, okay, so it. That's it was, when I was like, oh, like we're okay, gonna so it we're was gonna go full time. During that first time going to LA, that you were like, no, you know what? I need to quit my job and take this like yeah, because because me me and Pekka worked at the same grocery store together. Like we had the same job, mm -hmm. and I ended up telling him, I was like, bro, just quit this shit. Like, you focus on like editing and like you know make sure like we do our stuff on social media, and then I'll just focus on this so I could pay for the bills and things like that. Okay. So that was like the vibe that we were going for. Right. And then once we we went to LA, I had already quit. Like I was like, "Fuck this, I'm mm -hmm. not going back." How long? How long had you quit before you like went to? LA? No, like a couple of days. Oh, so it had been just a couple of days. Yeah. And then boom, you got to. Like LA. I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go to LA. We're gonna grind this shit out, and we're gonna make bread, and we're gonna we're gonna keep going with that." Yo, you know? yeah. all, right, all right, now it gets exciting because this is where you meet the boys. Yeah, you this is where I mean? y'all come in the picture. Okay, LA. Well, what year was that? 2020. Okay. November. 
LA 2020 November. You yeah. come to LA, you meet us. How did yeah. that all work out? Like, how did it, how did we come into being in the same room and living under the same roof for a couple of days? No, bro, no clue. Okay, so we pull up to LA. I think Pekka had hit up like Emily or something, or like uh -huh. Santi, Santi or Emily. And then, oh, it was Emily, because Emily told Santi, or told Ya. Okay. They're like, oh, we know this, like, girl, like, Pekka and Yero, like, they wanted to come over and, like, hang out with mm -hmm. us. And then Santi said that he didn't know who we were, but Emily knew us and, like, uh... Yeah, like, the, the girls like knew Like, Sile, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. knew us, right? And then, uh, they're like, fuck it, like, come over. And then that's when I met Ya. But yeah. I didn't really do, so, like, I still wasn't, like, on TikTok like that. Like, I was more, like, I don't know this TikTok world. Like, I was, I knew the YouTube world. You knew the YouTube yeah, world. Yeah, type of vibe. Because I remember y'all would ask me questions about YouTube, and I'd be yeah, like, oh, bro. you, you got to do this, you got to do this, and focus on this. Yeah, I remember you, I, I remember we were starting to get into YouTube, and, like, so, Yero, for us, at least me, bro, mm -hmm. I saw you as, like, this, like, do that like yo bro like he's doing his thing on youtube like this dude is considered a youtuber like mm -hmm. so it was my first taste of like a youtuber seeing a youtuber yeah because i had met we had met a lot of tiktokers before mm -hmm. but youtube i felt like at least for like me was always world. the goal yeah, yeah like youtube was always the goal at least for me because it's like bro like i grew up watching youtube so yeah to meet somebody that's like a youtuber i was wanting to get yeah when we met you i think we already had like like 200k or like a hundred like 170k yeah, on youtube and yeah and the views were like popping yeah the like views crazy. were crazy the views were definitely like they crazy were and really consistent yeah and the thing is that like you you guys would like constantly be like uploading like in the house and yeah. i would see all that how you guys would take it so serious like uploading and like yeah you guys would ask me for my laptop sometimes because yours was like bugging yeah so you guys Seeing all that is just like motivated me to be like, you know what, bro, I need to start taking it. Was it was crazy though, because like the first person I met, like the first influencer I ever met was Soraida. Soraida. Yeah, really? Yeah, Soraida was like the first one, because Soraida, Soraida and Paker were friends online. Uh -huh. So whenever we went to LA, the first person we linked up with was Soraida. Mm. And Soraida, like, we had invited her to go to the. I was like, oh, just come with us to, like, the house, to, uh -huh. which was y'all's. And she was like, no, like, I don't know them. I'm shy. Mm -hmm. Isn't that? So she didn't end up going, you know? Okay. But, um, yeah, so that was, like, the first person that, like, we made a TikTok with and, like, kind of collab. It was, like, our first, like, collab, mm -hmm. collab thing. So that was kind of cool. I fuck with Sorada. I still to talk to her here and there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's, cool. that's cool. Yeah, she's cool people. Yeah, man. she's a little vibe. But, damn, that's that's crazy. Okay, so LA, you guys start to get a taste of like what it is to be an influencer. Yeah. At this point, you already have a taste of what it's like to be an influencer, mm -hmm. though, because you're doing good on YouTube, doing good on TikTok. Yeah. Okay, now, for for you, what was how was it like like being in LA and like doing all that? Bro, like, so crazy. First time I was in LA, I was like, bro, this is cool as fuck. Right? I uh, was like, bro, this is crazy, like. Like the weather, the co and at the time LA was pretty empty. You know how like it was yeah. like COVID and like nothing was yeah, like happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you could drive down the streets and it was like you would see a couple cars. Yeah. Like there wasn't no traffic. Mm. And it felt cool, bro. Yeah, right? bro. The, it was like a different world, bro. Yeah, it was, like, it was, it was. Oh, I had never been on an airplane either. So like whenever mm. I went to LA and I got on an airplane, I was like, damn, this oh. is crazy. You know. You were experiencing so many new things. Yeah, bro. I bro. I remember yeah. one time. Uh. I accidentally saw like Emily's bank account, uh -huh. and at the, <laughs> at the time, like I had no idea like what money really was, you know. Right. Like I was, I was like, well, how old was I? I was like 21 at the time. Uh huh. Damn, this was three years ago. That's crazy. Anyway, <laughs> how did you see it? Go, 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 go. Bro, at the time I was like 21, you know, I I was just trying to pay for an apartment and doing things like that and like bills, right? Because yeah. I had just moved out of my parents, so I was like, oh, like this is my life now. Like mm -hmm. I gotta work. In different ways to like make bread and um well Pekka had a certain amount of money that we had like saved up through youtube and things like that but it would always go into her bank account because i was i wasn't legal you right. know what i mean mm -hmm. like i couldn't like put in a social or like things yeah, like yeah, that yeah. for money to transfer into my account mm -hmm. so Pekka was like handling all the money stuff that came through youtube and things like that and uh yeah, Pekka had a certain amount of money, and I was like, damn, like, we're doing good. Like, you know, this is this is lit, or whatever. And then one time I saw uh, Emily's camera overheated. We back, though. All right, let's keep going with the juiciness, bro. All right, so I, I was at where I had just saw Emily's a bank account. Ah! 
Bro, and I was like, damn, she has so much money. Really, like, really? And spill the beans, man. How much? Right, she had like, she had like 8.5k. Mm. But at that time, I was like, yeah. damn, yeah, like, like she's breaded the fuck up, uh-huh. you know? I know 8.5k is like, it's still a lot of money. Oh yeah, yeah. But like, is. I feel like we view it differently now, right? Yeah. You think, right? Or am I tripping? Bro, you see the thing with me, bro, is that I used to get refinery money, right? Mm. So, bro, there was a point. So you been had bread, bro. There was a point where I had a, uh, I had a little over ten racks in my bank account w- by working at the refineries, uh-huh. and bro, I thought I was like loaded, bro. I yeah. thought I was like rich, bro. Yeah. Until one day, I peeped my homie's bank account who was working at like some construction site, mm-hmm. and bro, that that dude had twenty two k in his account, and I was like, damn, like there really is levels to this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but went from twenty to, I mean, from ten to twenty-two. Yeah, but bro, when I started seeing social media money, it was different, bro, because I didn't have to like, I didn't have to like work as hard. Yeah, bro, I didn't have yeah. to be out in the sun like working ten hours a day mm-hmm. in the in the hot in the heat, heat, bro, hundred yeah. degrees plus. Like, Luckily, bro, I never worked like in the sun or neighbor. nothing like that. But yeah. that's why I never had a lot of bread when I was younger, you know, because. Right. I was like working at HEB and that's it's good money. You know, mm-hmm. working at HEB is not bad money. Yeah, but, I used to work at HEB too. Yeah, but like making four hundred, five hundred dollars a week. Yeah. It's like max too. Yeah, max, max. Like you weren't that's like you weren't getting to six. Yeah. You weren't no. even getting to five hundred fifty. Yeah, no, 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 no. You were like I was at like four twenty. Yeah, and that's, that's when with, I worked like forty. Yeah, hours, that's with you working bro. like, like 40, forty. Yeah. Maybe like forty one, a little bit of extra time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, I see none so of these bank accounts. You see a racks, and then you're like, I was like, mm. she got. Bread. Wait, okay, okay. Now tell me, how did you come about like peeping that, bro? It's- bro, I have no idea, but I remember <laughs> she had Chase. She had Chase. I remember. Were you cutting up a little bit? Oh, race calling me. It was Chase. I just called him back. Yeah, she had Chase, and I was like, oh, she <laughs> bred it. At the time, I had only. Well, I mean, Peka and us, we had a cool little bread, you know, somewhere around yeah. that. But we were spending it quick because she was like, oh, I want to buy a product bag or this and that. Mm. And I was like, all right, fuck it, you can do it. And like, it was going down fast. And especially with like. It would go up, but it would go back down. Yeah, especially with like LA, it was like, uh, she was going down. So I was like, damn. But now, let me tell you something though, because A Rex, and I definitely did not have A Rex in LA, bro. Like, in LA, we were like, I was like toughing it out, bro. Like, we were. The first few trips, we were, like, breaking even, which was, like, a miracle. We were, like, bro, okay, yeah, like, we didn't have to spend money. Like, we went back home, like, with just with as same, much money, right? you get me? Yeah. Like, which was a blessing to us. We were, like, yeah. man, at least we're not spending money. And then slowly, we started, like, making more and more. Yeah. And more. So, yeah, bro. Whenever, I, was, whenever I met you, I think I had, like, maybe, like, three grand in my bank account. Uh-huh. But um, I was, like, oh, like, I'm... I'm chilling, you know, I just quit, so I was like, I'm alright, I'll be yeah, able to yeah. pay things, but, yeah, I always, I always had, like, six, I think, like, the most before I did social media was, like, six or seven, mm-hmm. and then I had bought a car, so it, like, went yeah. down, you know, so then I stuck with, like, three, like, three to four, I would always like to have that, and then, I've always been, like, bien codo, bro, they got started dinero, yeah. especially back then, bro, I'd be like, Nah, like I'll just eat at home. Like I won't, I won't uh, go out to eat. The just Ray, like, Ray type vibes. Like yeah, like Ray <laughs> vibes, Ray ski vibes. So yeah, I had that. But yeah, it was crazy seeing Emily's bank account. I was like, damn, that's crazy. See, she man, making money. There was like, but I remember that that same month we had made a lot more than bro than A racks. Let me tell you something, bro. Cause. I remember, I, okay, so you know how you, you guys used to use, like, my laptop to, like, upload and stuff? Mm-hmm. Bro, I've never been the nosy type, bro. Right. I'm going to tell you that. Bro. You were I've the nosy never, type. I've never been the nosy type, bro, because I feel like what goes around comes back around, you feel me? So, yeah. like, uh, but one day, bro, like, I just opened my laptop, and I try to go to, like, YouTube, right? Uh-huh. And, like, on one of the pages, you guys left open your, like, youtube page like our studio yeah your youtube oh, studio where mm-hmm. and then i see like how much money you guys were like predicted to make that month uh-huh. and i was like bro how much was it bro honestly i don't remember but it was a lot bro like it was like it was good like it was a that's lot. crazy and i just remember being like damn like i didn't even know you can make that much on youtube i was like jeez yeah, like, 
It was a lot. But what would you say was like the most that you guys ever like made in a month? Made together? Yeah. It was like fifteen. But at that time, I was like, bro, $15,000 in a month off of YouTube. Bro, that's good. But it's whenever what? we saw y'all. Because we, because uh, our views, I mean, y'all were popping, bro. So our views went better for YouTube right. at that time. I think we were averaging like 300 like 250 per video. You know, and we had uploaded like a good amount of videos. Yeah, you guys were uploading really, really often. Yeah. Which was another thing that was like motivating. Yeah. Too. But like, yeah, 15. Uh, and we were like, yeah, we're, we're chilling. All right. We got that check in like January, bro, and I was like, damn, that's crazy. Wait, what you spend on? I bought a Louis, a Louis bag that I still have. Not a bag, a uh, little uh, wallet. wallet. Yeah, mm. that I still have. Yeah. Cause Pekka was like, get yourself something nice, like get something nice. Yeah. I think she bought herself like a Louis bag too. That shit was like three bands. I was like, you're. Two bands. Like, she was like, get something nice. I was like, fuck it, I'll get this. She was like, five hundred bucks on. So it wasn't nothing crazy. I've never been right. the type to like spend. Yeah, me either. Yeah. Me either to this day. Nah, yeah. now I spend a lot more money than yeah. I used to. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And it's like, it That's hurts. Really... It hurts. Because, like, yeah. I'd be waiting on, like, you know, certain promos to, like, land on. Like, <laughs> like, right now, I'm like, I right now, I got, like, the light bill. I got, like, right. I got my insurance. Right. I got my credit card. And I'm just like, bro, every week is, like, bro, every week is at least, like, a band without doing nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes even more. I'm just like, fuck. She kind of right. tough. Okay, so you get a taste of Cloud and everything. You know, fast forward, the whole yep. relationship ends and everything. Yeah. Uh, did you have, like, any fears of, like, man, like, what am I going to do now? Yeah. Since you guys were essentially, like, together. You know, your platform was, like, both of you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, how was that whole time? Like, what was, like, going on in your mind, basically? Yeah, after we broke up. Cause we went back to to Texas, right? And y'all stayed in LA, and then right, we didn't yeah. see each other for like what was it like three or four months? Yeah, it was, it was a minute. minute. Yeah, it was like minute. four months. Yeah, we broke up, and then I was like, damn, why? Well, I, I don't know what the fuck to do. I was like, I'm gonna try to do social media and things like that, but it wasn't really like working, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I would give views here and there, but it was more like of like the topic, which was like, oh, they broke up type of thing. And I wasn't getting promos because I wasn't really connected with some... Bro, and I remember the management we had. Bro, I got so fucked. Oh, you guys had management? Yeah, we had management for like... I think right before we broke up, we had management for like two months. Uh -huh. And uh, the management called me and they were like, Oh, so we know what happened between you and Pekka. Like, we were just wondering if you wanted to stick with us. Mm -hmm. And, bro, I was going through so much, bro. Like, I had so much on my mind. Like, I had just broken up with like, you know, my girlfriend of like three, almost four years, bro. And like my priority was my girlfriend. It wasn't like my priority wasn't like let me get this bread or let me right. let me blow up or like things like that, right? Like my priority was like what can I do to like fix shit with with you know my girlfriend. And I ended up telling the management I was like, oh, like if you guys don't mind giving me some time, like I'm going through a lot right now. Like I just need to figure out my options and like really think about it, bro. They call me the next day and they're like, hey, we. Honestly, we thought about it and they were like, we don't really want to work with someone who has to think about being with us. Mm -hmm. Like, we wanted like a for sure answer from your type of vibe, you know? Yeah. So they ended up, they were like, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to move on and uh -huh. with our like partnership and things like that. And I was like, whatever. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I did the social media stuff, but I wasn't doing shit. Like, I was mostly posting like little thirst traps, you know, mm -hmm. or like, or because, bro, after I broke up, I was like, I have to start like feeling myself like getting haircuts and like doing things for myself to like feel better for me because right. if not i'm gonna just be fucking focused on what's going on and what's happening mm -hmm. and i stayed in my room for like a month bro where like i wasn't really posting or you i wasn't were like in in depression type of thing. yeah basically basically I, I didn't know about like depression or anxiety like mm -hmm. before that i always thought depression and anxiety was fake i would be like nah like just fucking move up like get up and yeah. get over it but but then once i actually experienced it i was like oh damn this shit is real like i wasn't able to bro i wouldn't eat like i wouldn't like no me daba like appetite you know man and or like i remember bro, oh, I yeah, would, this is this is a good topic bro because <clears throat> a lot of people deal with like hard breakups mm -hmm. and i personally have never dealt with that so i don't ever know what advice to give to people but i feel like yeah. you're the perfect perfect person to give people advice that are either currently going through a hard breakup nah, yeah, that are sure. falling into depression and don't know how to get out of it 
uh, what would you say was the thing that like helped you get out of that? Honestly, getting out of your room. I think like distracting yourself with. Oh, another thing was that was hard that I didn't have a job, so I had nothing but fucking time. Mm-hmm. Like I had nothing but time to think about the situation and what was going on. You know, right? Nothing but time, and a lot of my friends, well, they worked. You know, so they were. They were like either working or not home and things like that. So I wasn't able to hang out with friends until like night, which helped a lot because at night is when shit really gets bad, you right, know. Yeah. But uh, yeah. After the after that, like I kind of just will talk to my mom. But I would I would be sitting down at dinner, bro, like trying to eat, and I would just like fucking start crying. It was crazy, but I would just start crying because of like everything that was going on. You know, I was hurt. Yeah. Right. And. Uh, yeah, I think what, like, just helping was just getting out there and, like, doing things for myself. Like, Being trying to make active. me feel good, you know? Uh, like, playing sports or, like, even just getting a haircut, like, once a week was something that really helped me. Because, like, I wasn't feeling ugly or things like that, mm-hmm. you know? And then once I, like, once I started, like, getting over... I wasn't really over the breakup. That shit took me forever. Like, I'm not even mm-hmm. finna hold y'all. That shit took me, like, like months, bro. Months, months, like, you know? How, how long would you say? Bro, it took me a while. Me and Pika broke up, what, like, February? I think it was, like, February, like, 15th around there of 2021. I wasn't really over it till, like, I don't know, bro. It was a minute. I wasn't oh, over okay. it for, like, it was It was a while. It took me a while. Because, okay, like. If you could go back, to, and this is still in the topic of, like, trying mm-hmm. to help people with that. If you were to go back in time, what would you tell Yeti so that he could like get over it quicker, quicker? Yeah. oh and you know what hurt me was fucking deleting pictures bro i think that's oh. the number one thing that'll help you get over like anything like just let it go like completely like cutting that part bro out of your life. i would like i would like swipe up on the pictures like all of them and like i would be ready to click that fucking delete button and i couldn't do it and i'd be like nah i'm not i can't do it like yeah, i can't let it go yet i guess it's because part of you still wants like to hold on to that yeah which makes it harder to move on yeah for sure so yeah that's good advice bro i feel like definitely like being self-aware of like man like part of me doesn't want to move on yeah it's gonna help you because yeah if part of you doesn't want to move on then how do you expect yourself to move on so yeah i would say yeah, yeah definitely sure. like cutting that person out completely yeah if you have but it, friends, it wasn't too difficult with like like the no contact with peka because like uh-huh. She made it real like clear that it wasn't like gonna be a like a on and off thing, you know right. And even before when we were in a relationship I told her cuz in her last relationship She would be like on and off with this guy and like I told her from the beginning I was like I don't do that on and off shit like you're either gonna mm-hmm. be with me or you're not gonna be with me You know like I made that clear so whenever we were we broke up we knew it was like it was it was done, it was done. Yeah, so uh, it wasn't like too hard on the no contact like I, I and we never blocked each other, like, on anything. So I just never hit her up. She never hit me up. And um, it, it it took maybe, like, five months, bro, for me to, like, delete, like, photos, messages, mm-hmm. like, Instagram and all of that. And I deleted everything, and I still even cried. Like, the day that I deleted photos and shit like that, bro, I cried. I was like, mm-hmm. damn, that's crazy. Like, so, now it really happened, you know? So to, like, resume, you would go back and tell Yeti just... Delete it. Delete yeah delete it as soon as you can like as soon as possible and then just distract yourself as much as you can in my opinion so stay active make sure to cut off everything that reminds yeah, you yeah and stop checking the instagram profile or the social medias because mm-hmm. that shit also took a while so i would i, would I was doing it like every day them. just i would just say block them nah i didn't block them just because i was like i don't want her to have that satisfaction of me but do you think it would have helped you a little more probably yeah but i would i could have just easily unblocked them if i really wanted to check it you know right but at that point you're like it's like you're making yourself you're putting an extra step that you have to do in order to it's knowing me accessible. knowing the way i am i would do every step to unblock it, <laughs> and, see it and unblock and block it again bro you know yeah, but i would definitely say to the people like out there struggling with that currently or yeah yeah just keep that in mind just like be self-aware that part of you doesn't want to let go and just make it as hard as possible for yourself to like be accessible to that yeah person. very true because uh, i still had like cards and like photos like mm-hmm. actual like photos like printed out like with her and i like the right. same day i deleted like pictures and things like that i threw away like 
cards, photos, memories, and things like that. Like I took it out. I took everything out. And then once once I did that, once I deleted the pictures, but I was like, oh, like it's it is what it is. You know, I'm not going back to it. And I never went back to it. Like it still took me a while, like because I was still like stalking social medias. But then after a while, you just kind of forget about it. You know, mm -hmm. you go like one day and you're like, oh shit, I didn't think about her yesterday. Cause bro, it yeah. was so constant with me. It was like. Maybe for like a year, bro, like Peka would just be in my mind. Like every day, you know, like every day her name would come up in my head. And then out of nowhere, it just took one day and I was like, oh shit, I didn't think about her yesterday, you know? Mm. And then after that, I was like, oh fuck, it's been a week since I didn't think about Peka. Mm. And then it became a month and then, yeah. and then you just get over it. Yeah. Eventually, as time passes, the memories that you had, you also forget them, you know? Like, yeah, they begin to fade. They begin to fade, yeah, exactly. Like, and also, you There's might only, you might still have some, but they don't have the same impact on you as exactly. They used to. There's only like certain things that I remember that me and Peka would do, and it was like significant, like important things, like graduation or like a birthday party mm -hmm. or like you know the time we gave my mom this or that, you know. Yeah. But it doesn't hold that value that it used to hold whenever you actually had feelings for them. Yeah. I think about that yeah. sometimes, bro. Where it's like it's so crazy because like the memories that I have with like my past relationships are so like so faded like, yeah they're so like vivid far. they're like there's like a little glance of it yeah, right it's yeah. like so far away that like it almost feels like the, like it feels like that person is like a stranger a now. stranger yeah and it's crazy because at one point like they weren't but it's yeah. now it's like they're literally like a stranger. yeah they're literally a stranger but, that's how i think even because i mean i did see peka like a couple times after you know uh like our breakup like i saw her like i think it was like three months or four months after our breakup and then like we talked about things but even when we were talking about things i was like oh no like i know i'm not getting back with this person mm -hmm. because of like like when you actually spend time apart from somebody else and then you see them again you realize how different y'all are and me and Peka right. were like the complete opposites you know mm -hmm. like a lot of people might not see it like that but whenever i see how she is and i see how i am now i'm like bro this girl is a complete different girl than than from what I am and for what I stand for and from what I think, you know? Yeah, and also both of you are just like completely different from the version of you that like fell in love with fell each other. Fell in love other. with each other, yeah, exactly. Which, yeah, some people just out, outgrow each other. Yeah, very true. Yeah, but okay, so breakup, Yeti like heals, he's better now. Yeah. Uh, You meet up back with us here in Houston, yeah. right? How, yeah. did, how did that go, go about? Santi had hit me up. And he told me that he was like, oh, like, I had seen your breakup and shit. Like, I know we hung out in L.A. Like, come through, come kick it with us. And that's when we went to the beach. Remember mm, when we went to the beach? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's when I met Valentina, too. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true. That's I was true. spilling the beans to Valentina and yeah. shit. Yeah, <laughs> you were venting to Yeah, because at the time, I just, and I was, it was still fresh, bro. It was like a month and a half into my breakup, you know? Because mm. I saw you at, like, end of March uh -huh. type of vibe, like, beginning of April. And yeah, we kind of just kicked it, made TikToks, and then, and then yeah, we're like, oh, we're gonna go back to LA, uh -huh. and then y'all came back to Houston, and then Santi was like, oh, I'm finna be in Houston, slide again, mm -hmm. and then that's when the whole drama thing happened, you know, uh -huh. like the big drama, and that happened, and then I was like, I did a lot of shit out of anger, you know, like so anger gets to you sometimes. Oh right? yeah, yeah, let's 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 touch on that because that's important. Yeah. And I feel like. Uh, Bro, I feel like me. both both girls and guys just like it's like the, the pettiness right like you're yeah. you're obviously like going through a breakup but there's feelings like going through you yeah. you're like angry mad sad all these types of emotions mm -hmm. and out of those emotions you tend to do a lot of things and I feel like a lot of like girls and guys out there do that where they'll like be petty and like post something maybe mm -hmm. it's like a girl like lip singing to a song that like talks trash about yeah I, bro a lot really of the like, times people would think that me and Peka were going like back and <laughs> forth with like lip syncing things or like uh -huh. audios but i was just posting a post were you really yeah i was just, honestly just posting a post once she started like talking shit about me because she had like this little group chat of like her friends of like supporters bro and they would like fucking dm me like oh your career's over like Peka's gonna expose you before she did everything that you know how everything started like, Peck is going to expose you and this and that. And I'll just be like, all right, whatever. Like, I wouldn't reply, you know? Because I was like, when I would reply, I was like, bro, at one point, you were supporting me, 
you know right. and now like just because a breakup happened you switched up completely when i haven't like done anything you know what would be your your advice to like uh, both guys and girls when they get that urge of like wanting to do something petty like on social media tours they're like man i still ex. be working with it though you know yeah. <laughs> i still at times bro when i get pissed i'm like bro i want to put something out but then i i like you know i try to keep my cool mm -hmm. i don't think i have advice on that because it's kind of hard All right, i think i do so throw some advice bro you know how i am bro you know like yeah. i always gotta bring god into everything i feel it and bro like though what keeps me from like talking mess about anybody in general mm -hmm. or like doing anything hurtful to anybody in general it's just the, like the thought of like that person is a daughter or son of god just as much as i am so whatever i need to be real careful in the way that i treat anybody else because god's gonna judge me for that bro and like mm -hmm. um there's a lot of bible verses that back it up but bro there's this one bible verse that i always keep in mind that says that let no foul talk come out of your mouth only that which is helpful to uplift somebody so basically it says like if you if you if the words that come out of your mouth are hurtful don't let them come out of your mm -hmm. mouth but if they're if they're like beneficial to make that person be uplifted then let them come out yeah because so basically god telling you like unless your words are gonna uplift somebody don't speak basically if they're talking shit throw some kindness at them yeah 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 yeah. Uh, that's good and, advice and yeah that's what i would say man i would say just like there's no there's no need because that at one point in the future you're gonna regret it like the more mature no i, reg person I regret i regret a lot of the things that i have like done on social media you know because i was like bro i just like looking yeah, back but, at it now i'm like damn i just look stupid you know yeah but you and live not e you live and you learn not even that bro like having having like online relationships and then break breakups and like going through things with somebody online it makes it so difficult yeah. to find somebody new you know wow. so like it makes it so hard because this other person that you're meeting can easily go online look up your name and see what you've been through you know or see like yeah, yeah, yeah. situations or like what you've said or what she said and things like that you know that's why like now every like relationship or like even like thing that i have with a girl i just keep it to myself you keep know it on the low. and anything that you guys see is just strictly for entertainment mm. like any girl that i post is not like nothing that like you know i'm taking serious Damn, all the girls have been posted peeling the top away right now. <laughs> Fuck it. It is what it is. <laughs> all right, but okay, let's keep it going then. We're we're at a point where you're already healed. You will meet up with the boys. You start yeah. getting closer to us and everything. Uh, now we're in the present, bro. Tell us about your life now, bro. How has it been? Like, looking uh, back at all of that, like, how do you feel it's now? Crazy. How's, how's life for you right now, bro? It's crazy because to think that it's only been three years, like, three years doesn't seem like a lot. But it yeah. feels like it's so long ago, you know? Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, me and Pekka were like, we dated a long ass time ago. Or like, me and Natalie dated a long ass time. But bro, I broke up with Natalie last year, you know? Oh, like, it, I broke it up with her like in like so 2022, ago. which is like, not that long ago. It yeah. feels like a long ass time. Or like, me and Pekka broke up in 2021. And it feels like a long time, but it's only been, bro, it's only been two years. <gasps> well, two years and a half. That's Think crazy, about that, you see? Bro, Cause it sounds like so little, but it feels like so, feels like forever. Yeah, it feels like forever. Yeah, but it, it wasn't that long ago, you know. So, yeah. I mean, now I'm like I'm at a point in my life where I'm really happy because I just get to have fun every day and like chill mm -hmm. and do my own thing, you know. So it's like vibes. Yeah. But like, I do miss like like 2020 vibes, you know, when like. Everything was new and Everything shit was happening. Was new and you know, exciting. Exciting yeah. and things like that. I feel like now we've established like who we are on social media. Well, not yet, because, bro, we still have so many people to reach, you know? Yeah, yeah there's so many people that don't know we who exist, we are. Yeah, exactly. That haven't come across our videos yet. Mm -hmm. and we just haven't made it to their For You page or to yeah. their like Explore page. Literally. But, but life is exciting now. I had, I, I like, I had fun in high school, you know? I skipped a lot my senior year, which was like a vibe, because like I had an off period, so I would skip like, I skipped like half of the day. Shit was lit, and then like even after high school, I had fun. I've had fun, like I've, I haven't lived a bad life, so so far it's been lit. But uh -huh. I just like now what like worries me is like dying, which is like <laughs> another topic. 
<laughs> yeah, because I be thinking about death a lot. Mm-hmm. And I was going to make a YouTube video about it. Because, mm-hmm. like, there's times where you I, should, like... You should, you should. Yeah, I really should. Plug it, plug it right now. What, plug plug my input on death or, like, plug the YouTube video? Plug the video you about to make. Uh, Are yeah, you going to make it? Because if you I plug it, you got to make it. I, I might, I might, but I'll give you a little glimpse of it, you know? Like, I'll be uh-huh. thinking about, like, like, I'm 24, and I used to think being 24 was old as fuck. Nah, it is, it is. All right, right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but whenever I was, like, 14 or 13, and, like, someone yeah. would be like, oh, I'm a teacher, and I'm 24 years old. Bro, I'm 24. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, I used to see you as a grown-ass fucking adult. I don't see myself as a grown-ass adult, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you see yourself no, as a grown adult? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bitch. <laughs> We're just, you're no. just not there yet, bro. <laughs> nah, like, I be thinking about it, and I'm like, bro, there's no way, like, like my teacher who was 24 when I was in elementary was doing the same shit that I'm doing now that I'm, I'm 24, you know? Yeah. Like, there's no way. There's no way she was going out partying and getting faded and fucked right. up and hopping in random girls cars or dudes cars, <laughs> you know calling it a night at like six in the morning you know yeah yeah i don't i don't know but yeah and then and then i'm like damn in six years i'm gonna be 30 fuck in five years you're gonna be 30 bro and then like when i met my mom for the first time she was 27 <gasps> wait oh she was 28 part. Oh, when I met my mom dude. for the first time, she was 28, 27, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, like... You're only two years away from Bro, I'm about to be three. 27 in two, three years. Yeah. I'm about to be 28 in four years. And four years ago, I was 20, and 20 doesn't seem like it was that long ago. They... So it's like... And now I see my mom at, like, 45, and I'm like, fuck, I'm, I don't even know if I'm going to make it to the 45 the way I'm living, you know? All right, so let's get back on the topic of death. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you... What do you think about death? Like, well, when you think about death, what goes through your mind? Just the fact that I'm not going to be on this earth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think about. I, bro, I'd be sitting at restaurants uh-huh. and just me in my head. Like, you could be eating with me, right? But mm-hmm. just me in my head, I, like, look around and I'm like, damn, bro, in 100 years, nobody that's in here is going to be here. Yeah. In 100 years, 100 years ain't even, like, that much, bro. 100 years was fucking, I don't know. I'm just like, damn, that's crazy. I be thinking shit like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, like, I watch a movie that's, like, shows an old person that's, like, 90 years old in 2010, you know? Like, the movie is, like, in 2010, they're 90. Bro, and the thing is that like, death, That person isn't here no more. Yeah, the thing is that death comes like this, bro. Yeah. And it's, it's crazy, but, like, you don't really, really, really think about death until somebody, like, close to you, like, passes. When somebody close to you passes and you realize how, like, sudden it was... Mm-hmm. You were like, you started to realize, like, man, like, that could be anybody. Like, that could be me. That could be my mom, my dad, like, my siblings. Yeah. Bro, the other day, like, two days ago, I had a dream that my mom had passed, bro. And it felt so real. And I remember, like, just crying, bro. Like, I would take a break from crying, and I would think about it again, and I would cry again. Because I was just, I I had the same, I had the feeling of her just, like, not being here anymore. In the world, yeah. And what scared me the most was that like I would ask myself like man like God like where did she go where did she go mm-hmm. like did she go to heaven or did she go to hell because my mom like she believes but she always says like oh like I'm like like I believe but like I'm not I'm not like you you get me like mm-hmm. like you're like all in like I'm not all in like I just believe in God and I pray but basically me yeah like so, I believe in God but you know I still sin every single day in my life yeah so that's yeah that's kind of like like my mom so like I remember in the dream I was just like God like where did she go and I felt so guilty for like Damn. not yeah, in the dream, bro, I felt so guilty for not, like, like talking to my mom about, like, God more mm-hmm. and not making sure that she went to heaven. But, yeah, bro, like, that was, like, the first dream I've ever had about death. Mm-hmm. And it scared me, bro, because I had never felt, like, the fear of, like, somebody yeah, dying. Yeah, fortunately, bro, I've that. never had anybody close to me die other than, like, my soccer coach, you know? Like bro, he, me too. He That's passed crazy. away March 2021. Bro, that's another thing, bro. Like, I was going through a breakup, and then my fucking soccer coach passed away a month later. You know? So, it was, like, so much going on in my life, bro, that I was, like... Yeah. My head was everywhere, bro. Everywhere. And, yeah, it was crazy. But my soccer coach was, like, someone who died, and I was just, like, damn. 
and I, then I saw like him, his body, like in the casket, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, damn, like he's gone. Yeah. Like I'm never, I'm ne- And I would we like he worked at this uh spot called Mozart's. It was like a cafe where I worked at too. And then I ended up quitting. But then I would go visit, and every time I would go visit, like I would say hi to him, and he would dab me up, and like. You know, he would always pat me hard as hell in the back, bro. Yeah, it's just... Oh, and, like, bro, I went that... to go visit the spot, and he wasn't there. And I was like, damn, that's so crazy. Bro, and that in the dream, that's what, like, got me, like, broke me to tears, bro. Was that the fact that, like, one second that person was there, the other second they're just not there, bro. Yeah. And, yeah, I feel you on that because, like, my coach from high school passed to mm-hmm. my senior year. And then, uh, no, actually... The, the year after I graduated. So I was, like, my year was the last one that he coached. Mm-hmm. And then the next year he passed. And then, yeah, bro, it's just that feeling of, like, man, like, we had just been with this person. Like, you had just interacted with this person. Like, yeah. that person had texted you, whatever. And then I don't know where they're just gone. Like, yeah, I respect to ass. them again. Yeah, I picked up this thing where, like, I popped my elbow. Like, I go like that. Uh-huh. Like, just randomly. And I picked it up from my coach. Oh, really? And every time I do this, I always just think of him. I'm like, oh, my God. I remember he would be like driving and he had a standard and like we would be going to soccer games. They would just go like that. This shit would pop. But yeah, I'd be thinking about death. I'm like, damn, at one point I'm not going to be on this earth. And like, it's coming. All right, bro. Then I'm going to ask you the most important question you'll ever be asked. Mm. You say you always think about death. Let's Mm -hmm. say Yeti, something happens to you, bro. Your heart stops right now. (sighs) Be honest with yourself, bro. Where do you think you're headed? Like to hell or heaven? I would like to say I'm going to heaven, bro, because I I don't rob or I don't kill or I don't I don't have malicious intent with anybody, you know. Right. But I don't think I would go to heaven, bro, because I don't live the way God wants me to live. To keep it a stack, right. you know, like I don't pray every day. I don't have a relationship with God. I believe in God, but I don't have a relationship with Him. Mm-hmm. I go to church maybe like once or twice a month. Um, I, I'm not married and I have sex. I don't even have a girlfriend and I have sex, you know? Yeah. I like, I send a lot, bro. I send so much every day mm-hmm. that I don't even think about it, you know? Right. But I don't think I would, I'd want to go to heaven because I consider myself a good person, you know, just because of the fact that I, I don't do anything to society that mm-hmm. harms anybody. If I'm harming anybody, it's myself, you know what I mean? Right. But then again, I also don't live, like, by the rules of God and, like, the Ten Commandments and all of that stuff. Yeah, you've, like... You know... You've you broken God's every, laws. Every time, well, every time, like, I think about God, I always think of, like, that story that we picked up from whenever we would go to church. Every time when you take me to church, I always pick something up. But, like, you were... I remember we, uh... We went to, like, the church group or church class in L.A. Mm-hmm. And, like, we were seeing, like, the... The priest like talk on the TV or whatever. Yeah. And he w- he was saying something like, or I don't know if it was you saying it, but saying something like, uh, how how you how do you expect God to let you in His home when He doesn't even know you? Like you're not gonna let a stranger go inside your house. Oh yeah. You me. know. Yeah. yeah, I think you said that right. Yeah. And you were like, oh, like imagine you're taking a road trip and like your tire pops, and then there's like this one house, right? And like you go knock and you expect them to like let you in and stay there, but they don't even know you and you don't have a relationship with them. Yeah. Like if someone came to the house and was like, "Yo, can you give me a spot to stay at for tonight?" I'm not gonna do that shit. Cause you I don't, don't know, know them. You don't have a relationship with them. Yeah, exactly. But the moment you have a relationship with God, He can let you in. Now, okay, now let me ask you, bro. Where mm-hmm. do you think I'm going? I mean, the way you've been living your life lately, I'd say you're going to heaven. Okay, what what makes you think that? Uh, you stopped cussing. You got married. Um, you're more calm now. You don't you don't do you send less than me. All right, now let like me tell that. you this, bro. Because the Bible says that no nobody earns them their way into heaven. Like the Bible, the Bible is clear that you don't. Nobody comes to heaven unless mm-hmm. through Jesus. Which means that me like doing all those things is like me just following God's like laws, right? Mm-hmm. But those things is not what's going to get me to heaven because at, at that point. I would have like earned my way into heaven by following. All like you're just doing it to, to get into heaven. Yeah, cause like, 
the thing is, bro, that God doesn't want you to get the glory. Like, if you become a good boy now and, like, you stop doing all those things, mm -hmm. like, what are you going to think? You're going to be like, oh, like, good on me. You gave me, like, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm able to go to heaven now because of me, because I changed my ways. Right. But that's not what the Bible says, bro. The Bible says that there's one, one way into heaven, and it's through Jesus Christ, through accepting. So, look, this is the easiest way that I could put it, bro. Okay. Is that, like, let's say in the real world, if you break a law, like, if you break some mm -hmm. like, whatever law, like, you have to get punished for it, right? right? Like, even if you didn't mean to, even, like... You can't go up to the judge and be like, oh, well, judge, well, I, I didn't mean to do it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, he's still going to have to punish you for it yeah. because you broke a law. And so you're going to have to serve time. So okay. it's the same way with God's laws, bro. Like, we've broken God's laws. We've all done it. We've all lied. We've mm -hmm. all sinned in so many different ways. So we all deserve the same punishment. I'm, I was a thief. <laughs> yeah. So in the real world, for being a thief, you deserve to go to jail, right? Mm -hmm. And the spiritual world for bro for being for having broken god's laws you just the bible says that you deserve to go to hell the bible says that the consequences to breaking god's laws is hell mm -hmm. that's like the that's the punishment uh -huh. so it's jail and hell right basically same thing right but let's say you go to jail bro i got money i can go and bail you out bro mm -hmm. you know i mean like oh it's gonna be five racks to take yeti out Boom. okay judge i got it here Say you go that. five racks i got it some light I'm like, my boy let's go well, i got you out uh -huh. well in the spiritual world that was that's what jesus did bro jesus dying on the cross that's what he did he paid the fine for you to be able to get out of hell mm -hmm. not because all of a sudden you're a good boy but because of jesus bro. because mm -hmm. of because jesus decided to make a way into heaven okay even though you don't deserve it even though i don't deserve it okay so that's why jesus came down died on the cross was crucified uh and the thing is bro have you watched narnia mm -hmm. you need to watch narnia i bro. love narnia yeah that's like one of my the, favorite movies. the lion in narnia you know how he like uh -huh. he was like basically like killed even though he didn't do anything wrong uh -huh. and he did that so that his people could be saved that, that was a representation of what Jesus did. Like, Jesus mm -hmm. died for us. He was a perfect man. But with his death, he made a way for us to go to heaven. He That's paid. Fire. He paid the fine. So, yeah. So, basically, when, if, whenever people ask you, bro, like, why are you going to heaven? If somebody tells you, like, oh, because I'm a good person, nobody's going to heaven because they're a good person, bro. People go to heaven because they receive that free gift that Jesus gave of salvation. So what, am I going to heaven just because Jesus died for me? Yeah, if you believe it in your heart. If you believe oh, in your heart man. that Jesus died for you and rose again, and you're, in, according to the Bible, uh -huh. you're going to heaven. Oh. So it's not because of your own works, bro. But also the Bible does say that you, you must love God with all your soul, all your heart, all your mind. Mm -hmm. And in loving God, you're not going to, if you love your mom, bro, you're not going to disobey her. Yeah, so it's the true. same way with God. If you truly love God, you damn, might... that's crazy. I never thought of that. Yeah, bro, and that this is one thing that I always ask people. I'm like, bro, you think you're going to heaven? And the most of, most of the people say like, if they think they're good people, they'll say, yeah, I think I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. You know, I don't do, I don't like kill anybody. Basically, I what I just told you. Yeah. Yeah. But at that point, it's like you're basically that's that's the wrong answer, bro. Like, yeah, you don't make it into heaven because you earn it. Because you're good or bad. Because you're good or bad. Right. We're all bad, bro. Like, there's not one... The Bible says there is nobody is good but God. Yeah. There's not one person in this world that deserves um, to go to heaven. Yeah. The only reason we we're go able to go to heaven Jesus died for is us. because Jesus died for us and made a way for us well, to go to heaven. Uh, and all right. we have to do is accept it. Yeah. And the moment you do that, bro, and the moment you receive Jesus into your heart, then, like, you will just start, you'll just start feeling this gratitude in your heart of mm -hmm. wanting to change. That's what happened to me, bro. I didn't just, like, start changing because I was like, oh, like, I want to be a good boy now. I don't want to go to hell. Not like, mm -hmm. I accepted Jesus into my heart. I was like, Jesus, like, I give you my life. I want to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, like, he started, like, like, for me, like, drinking felt different. Like, I felt guilty now. Mm -hmm. After Whenever I would drink, I would feel guilty. Whenever I would go party, I would feel guilty. Something that I had never felt before. Felt, yeah. But that was God's way of, like, teaching me to, like, let go of, like, all those things. Mm -hmm. And slowly, that's how I started letting go of that. Started letting go of sex. How do you do that? Because, like, I mean, especially right now, you're, like, 25, right? Do you feel like you'll ever, like, regret? Okay, like, let's say... 
Because, you know, people, as they get older, their beliefs change and things like that. Do you think right. Do you think as you get older, maybe your beliefs will change and you'll be like, damn, I, I maybe regret not going out as much as I used to or, like, drinking when I was young or things like that, you know? Because, like, right now, like, we live, like, the complete opposite lives, you know? Like, yeah. you're married, you're thinking about, like, kids and your wife and, you know, like, God and things like that. While I'm, like, I'm partying... Like, I kind of, like, I'm not, like, rebel, like, rebellious, you know? But, like, I do mm -hmm. uh, the, I do the things you wouldn't. You know what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, You think you ever regret, like, not living your life the way I live mine? No, bro. Because the thing is that I've seen both sides of the coin, bro. Like, I've I've been in where you, yeah, yeah, where you you're have. at. You get me? And so I've done all those things, and I've experienced God's goodness. I've experienced, like, the peace that, like, living with God Mm -hmm. gives me and like the favor that i get mm -hmm. and like i've I've seen both sides and bro like being with god does not compare so like, i i truly believe with my heart with like every bone in my body bro that mm -hmm. god is real and that jesus is real because uh, i've experienced it by myself you know? yeah like, i've experienced things in private that like no but like even if i were to tell you it's not the same because you're not experiencing it yourself you mm -hmm. feel me so like it's like hard for me to explain to anybody because they have to they have to experience it themselves in order to be like wow like that's that's something you feel me but yeah yeah I, i've i've experienced both sides bro and bro, I could i'm not gonna about, lie though like, I, I know eventually like eventually like uh -huh. whenever my heart desires and wants to i know i'm gonna like change you know yeah like I know it because every time I know I, it too, bro. Every time I go to church or like every time I like do certain things, I'm like, you know, God's always like in my mind, and I think about it sometimes, you know. Yeah. And every time I go to church, I feel good. Like I, I come out with a different mindset of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I be running from it. No cap. I told Benny too. Uh, that I was like, bro, I be running from it. I don't know why I run from it. Uh huh. Cause, well, from the wedding, you know. That was his name, right? Yeah, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, I was telling him, I was like, bro, like, I run from it. Like, I don't know if it's because, like, I'm not ready or, like, what it is. But at times, I do want to be, like, you know, that that person, you know, that's close to him and things like that. But then I also get scared and I'm like, damn, what if I don't make the same amount of money? Or, like, you know, mm -hmm. like, what if my views go down or, like, what if I lose followers in yeah, this way? Cause, and yeah, because like that. that's the thing, too, bro, that, like... I'm not going to come to you and tell you that it's easy, bro, because it's not. That would be lying to you, you feel yeah. me? Because it's not easy, bro. Bro, and with the all the temptation there is in the world, yeah. bro, like, I'd be telling myself, like, nah, I'm not going to go out this weekend. And recently, bro, surprisingly, I haven't been going out. Or, like, mm -hmm. I mean, I went out for Santi's event, things like that. But whenever I'm like, oh, like, I want to go out because I want to go out, you know? Mm -hmm. Nah, I'm capping. I have been going out now that I think about it. <laughs> but, like, I haven't been having fun, I guess. You know? Yeah. And there was maybe like two or three weeks where like I stayed in every weekend. Where was I going with this? I don't know where I was going with this. I was going to say a point, but I forgot. Look, but what I was going to tell you is that it is going to be hard, bro, because the thing with saying yes to something is that you're saying no to something else, right? Mm -hmm. If I tell you, yeah, bro, I'm going to go eat with you, then I'm saying no to like staying home and working or mm -hmm. I'm saying no to a lot of other things you get me yeah because I said yes to you. that's what we're talking about temptation right so yeah so yeah. the moment you say yes to Jesus bro there's a lot of things that you're gonna have to say no, no to, to you get me and that's yeah. what that's what's like holding you back that's what holds back a lot of Everybody. people from coming to God is that they feel like they're not ready but in 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 reality bro you're never gonna be ready like you're never gonna be ready you're the moment you begin to accept Jesus, he's going to get you to be ready. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what people get twisted is that people think like, oh, I have to be perfect before I come to God. Or mm -hmm. I have to like make sure I let go of all these things first. Like, no, like God's going to help you to let go of all mm -hmm. those things. And even though you don't want to, want to let go right now, like mm -hmm. God's going to replace that desire that you have to like party and drink and have sex with a greater desire to please him. Mm -hmm. But yeah unless you experience it bro really like this is all just rambling because yeah yeah, yeah. You, it's you not like have to experience it you yourself. have to experience yeah. it but yeah on your own and it's all yeah, really like all i do is just trust god's timing bro like and i pray for you a lot bro and i know that Appreciate it's gonna that. come in the time that Appreciate it has to that. come but 
But yeah, bro. I was, I'm, I'm happy that this happened, bro. I'm happy Other than that. that cool ass talk. Yeah, I'm happy yeah. that this, I'm happy we put this together, bro. This little car talk. I feel yeah. like I know you way more now. Yeah, I viral. definitely learned a lot of a lot of things about you that I didn't know, bro. Yeah. First, first second we we jumped in, Fernando. Like, what? yeah, that's crazy. crazy yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been through a lot. Like, that's why, like, yeah, that too, bro. I didn't know you had been through that much. Yeah, bro, and I mean, there's certain things I can't tell you on here, like you know how I got to the United States and things like that. Right. You know, like how I migrated and things yeah. like that, and like what I went through to like crossing the border and things like you that. You were a kid, bro. Yeah, I was a child, but I still had like an understanding of what was going on, bro. Yeah, shit was literally like a movie, bro. I'll tell you off camera, but uh-huh. literally like what you see in movies is what I experienced as like a little baby. Man, yeah, bro, and this really goes to show you, bro, that like you really don't know what somebody's been through. Yeah, right? you really don't. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah, bro. I see you like around, you know, like goofing around. I'm always cracking being, jokes and shit like that. Always cracking jokes, always yeah. being funny, but in reality, you never know what somebody's past has been like. Yeah, I mean, it's cool though. People have like their stories, you know, and experiences, which is like literally life but like you always yeah. think that like oh that person hasn't gone through shit things like that you know or maybe like i don't know somebody random might be like oh he hasn't this little fucking kid hasn't gone through nothing like he owns a fucking super lives in a nice ass house with his friends like he has he's had life good but like it was never that. like how it is right now you know yeah. i just started experiencing this like a year ago uh-huh. you feel me it wasn't something that like just came about or like right. i've had it like my whole life yeah yeah and that's so. dope too, bro, because the viewers now get to, like, really, like, connect with you now because they, like, know you yeah, personally. For sure. And they, yeah, they know. And, bro, just keep in mind, bro, that your story is powerful, bro. Like, your life is powerful. Everything you've been through has the potential to help somebody. Like, you, like, yeah. migrating to the U.S., that has, a, you have the potential You know to what help. I think about all the time, bro? Uh-huh. I think about this shit all the time, bro. Like, if God would have never, like, put me in a relationship with Pekka and Pekka wouldn't have ever told me to like let's make YouTube videos or like let's post on TikTok or this and that like I would have never met y'all bro I would have never met y'all or the people that I know or the people that know me bro I remember I remember being in high school and I would be like nah I'm gonna I'm gonna be a YouTuber like I would say that bro I would literally bro my my high school friends like if, if I ever bring them around you bro like, I would tell them, like, oh, they'd be like, yo, bro, are you going to college? Or, like, what are you going to do? Like, are you planning? And I was like, nah, bro, I'm going to be a YouTuber. Oh, bro, no idea how I was going to do it. Dope. And I wasn't even with Pekka at the time when I would tell him that. Oh, really? I wasn't even with her. I wasn't doing YouTube or nothing. And I would be like, oh, I'm going to be a YouTuber. Like, I'm going to post videos online. And I always think, like, if God would have never, like, you know, put me in this relationship and all of this that happened, ha- I'm not going to lie. The breakup was probably, like, the best thing that could have happened for me mentally. And, like, you know, being able to handle my own money and things like that was probably the best thing that could have happened to me. Because it's difficult, you know, doing things with somebody else. And especially when money gets involved. Mm -hmm. Money getting involved in relationships, family is... It always somehow ends up bad. Because there's someone that's always going to be greedier or going to want more. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But, like, yeah, I always think about that. I'm like, damn. Like, I would have never met Santi, you, Jose. Yeah. And kind of yeah. wild. So, we forgot. I forgot what we were talking about. But right The butterfly now, effect. The butterfly effect. Mm, yeah. Yeah, but right now we were talking about how uh, generational curses. I was telling you how generational curses are a thing. And how, like, um, like things that happen to, like, your parents my pass down to like you guys so for example like something that's very common is like alcohol that like, there's a lot of times where like the parent one of the parents would be an alcoholic and then like one of the kids it'll pass down to one of the kids and then the kid like the kid will have kids and then it'll pass down and to them him, yeah. and it's called a generational curse for that reason because it's something that goes over and over and over again it's seen time and time again through generations yeah. but i was sa- telling you that bro to tell you that like you have like a a responsibility, bro, on your I shoulders. I gotta break the curse. To break those curses, bro. Yeah. To make sure you found you find like the right wife, 
the wife that you're gonna be for be with for the rest of your life so that mm -hmm. your your kids can have a mom you get me like mm -hmm. so that your so that your kids get to experience what you couldn't experience bro mm -hmm. and i have that same that same uh responsibility because i come from parents that split up too and so that's why when i married valentina bro i had i like prayed about it so much because i was like god like I need to make sure that this is the wife I'm gonna have for life. Mm -hmm. You get me? Because I want my kids to like grow up with both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. That's something well, like, like I mean, luckily I kind of didn't experience it though, bro. Cause I always had my stepdad, you know. Yeah. Right. Which I always viewed as a father. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, and that's good. Right? I always viewed my stepdad as like my dad. Right. So it's like he was always the father figure, and then of course I had my mother figure, you mm -hmm. know. But I get what you mean, though. Yeah. Like. You know, yeah, biologically, you know that, that, biological parents. Right. Yeah, because yeah. you know, I mean, in a sense, he is your dad because he nurtured you and he took care of you. But yeah. that hurt that you went through when you, like, found, found out that he wasn't your biological dad. And, mm -hmm. like, that hurt that you have of, like, your real dad not really being there for you. Like, mm -hmm. you get me? Like, all of that is not going to exist in your kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, for sure. But, but yeah, bro, all of that comes with, like, you know, just prayer, like, Mm -hmm. Asking to God, like God, I want to be like the best version of myself for my kids, for my wife, yeah, for myself, for you. you get me? Yeah. But Yeti, thank you for yes, being sir. here, bro. Thank yes, you for sir. making this happen, bro. I love you, man. It was I a love pleasure you too, having you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any final things you want to touch on? I'm changing, guys. I'm changing. Hey, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the, next, the next year's car talk, yeah, he's gonna be different. A pastor. Different. I'm gonna have a wife by then, hopefully. Oh, uh, hey, that's crazy, bro. It's gonna be fun to look back at. This Imagine though, a year from a now. Year from now? Yeah. yeah, bro, a lot could change in a year. A lot bro. can change in a year. A lot has changed for me in a year, so you yeah. never know. Yeah, one year ago, me was like completely different. One year ago, you was completely different. So yeah. A hundred percent. Next year, a, us. I have a mustache last year around this time. Mm. That's a big thing. This has changed a lot. What, do you, what do you think you're going to have next year? Probably a full beard, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be funny. <laughs> but all right, Yeti. I love you, my boy. Love you, bro. Thank you for being here. Yeti's links will be down below, guys. Y'all yeah, make go sure check to him out. follow the boy. Now that y'all know his whole life story and y'all know him more Basically. personally. But, Yeah. It was a pleasure having you, bro. For sure. Thank you, bro. Love you guys. God bless y'all. I'm going to catch y'all on the next car talk. Peace. Peace.